I took this photo earlier in the year when I was in the Lake District. This is the road that runs alongside Allswater there on the left hand side. So we got not much happening in the sky as, as quite frequently actually. Whenever you look at these photographs, a lot of the time the skies are pretty bland, so it's up to uh, yourself to sort of make it a bit more interesting. We can just about see a distant hill mountain over there, more of a foreground one, and a nice few trees in front of there, a nice sweeping road. I don't think I'll bother with the uh, the vehicles. I think they look nice when there's like a little figure, maybe even with a walking stick, just heading off into the horizon. Got some little fence posts there, big foreground tree. So let's see what we can make of this. I've got my palette here, I've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizard and crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber and light red. Got three brushes, three quarter inch flats, large one rancid oak, and a number three rigger. Got a clean water in the jar and 15 by 11 Fabriano and it's clipped to a piece of 9mm plywood to keep it steady. The other item is the tea towel drying on the top there that I use to take the excess water off the hay. So, one quick look at the photograph and let's, uh, let's have a bash at it. So I'm just going to give this a quick quick dampening with the brush, clean water, stop it giving all cream clean horrible. Plus all the uh, background and sky softens nicely with no hard edges. So, a bit of raw sienna, just to give a bit of background, background colour. Clean the brush, get the excess off, and then let's go into a bit of raw sienna, um, ultramarine, sorry. And then just brush some of that down there. Quick clean again, and let's just. Stick a few clouds, you know, um, lizard and crimson, burnt umber. You don't want to add much water now because otherwise it's going to drip straight down the pipe because the pipe is already wet. So all I'm going to do is just a quick, and that's it. It's so tempting to do too much. You can always take a bit out with a bit of tissue if we want. And we've got the distant land there, so I don't want to want it fairly light to get the profile of those hills. And mountains, so I'm just taking out bits of clouds here and there. That'll do. And then while I've still got that colour on the brush, it's popping that. Where's the horizon? Horizon's about there. So that's uh, that's a bit too strong. So don't worry, just soften it off a bit. You can always just take some of the paint out like that and just make it a bit lighter. I'm just going to soften it even still. Strengthen it a bit more. And let's, let's get a bit. This is the pill on the uh, left hand, on the right hand side now. Working its way up. And you can see where I took the clouds out, so I can see nice and clearly now the profile of this mountain. Bring this one down a bit. Just trying to bear it as I'm coming down. Um, I might just use water now. This is just clean water, not too much. It's just to lighten, lighten the bottom of those mountains. So I could have done that with those, with the, that distant mountain as well, rather than use the tissue because it's maybe a bit untidy along there, but not so worry. But now because this is nice and light, the trees will show up better. Bit of raw sienna. And then what I'm going to do next is lemon yellow, Payne's grey. Just using the corner of the hike, 
Try and be a bit more careful than what I but actually I'll show you. And you just pop it up like that. You can use the flat like I've done in the previous paintings if you want. You can see by softening it, it'll show up even better if I dried it. If I was to dry this now, you'd, you'd show up really sharp, but I'm trying to compensate by making it really strong mix. Doing it that way. That'll do, don't want too much. Um, you can see how I've come down too far, easy way around that. Just take a damp brush, clean damp brush, and just take the bottom off. Just take the bottom away. Nice and simple. Now on the left hand side, these trees actually just put a bit more on this side. There's something, something there. Just a little bit of that's a little bit too strong, so I'll just soften that off again. So at this time use a damp brush. If it's too strong, just soften it off with a bit of water. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, and then on this side, just pop it in these distant. Distant trees and branches and stuff. I'm not going to bother too much, there's a big tree trunk there, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, just stick a few little... branches and stuff in there. Now the paper's stretched a bit, so it's coming away from the board, so I'll just pull that size. And really fix it. So it's nice and flat to work with again. Clean the brush, and on the right hand side of this picture, there's a bit of grass, so a bit of raw sienna, a bit of lemon yellow, and then just woof that straight across. I just dipped into the ultramarine then just to vary it, vary it as it come down, a bit of ultramarine, burnt one back just to darken it up a bit and that sort of comes down a little bit to the edge of the road. Something like so. Right. Now, same again on the left. Not much grass on this side, so I think it's all uh, sort of dead, a bit dead. I'm just working out the shape of the uh, road here now. Something like. Like that. Okay, I might put this road in there. That's the road. It's a sort of grey colour. I'm just going to mix a bit of Payne's grey. Ultramarine, let's just have a bit of burnt umber in there as well. And then just give it a quick sweet brown. Something like so. And I'm just going to push these bits up to the edge. And then like that. Before I do any more, I'm just going to give that a dry.
that dry, next thing I'm going to do is take the flat brush, three quarter inch flat, and let's make some of them with these fence posts. So I'm just going to go in, burnt umber, a bit of ultramarine. Oh, got the biggest one starts up down here somewhere. I need a bit more water. If the paint's not coming off the brush, just add a bit more water, loosen it up a bit. Biggest one's there. And that's all. That's all get closer and closer and closer and smaller and smaller as I go off into the distance. And then if you just sort of Those. Let's pop this tree. Actually, let's just get this a bit stronger. A bit stronger down there. See, if it's got this sort of bank, bank that's coming down. Let's put this tree on the left hand side. So I'm just doing a dark mix for the trunk. Burnt umber, ultramarine, and then starting about here, just side strokes with a hike. Up. That one, that just goes right up to the top. Then you got, there's a big branch comes off something like that, and then a smaller one up there. Little branch down there, there's a big one up there. The big one. And then switch to the uh, Riga brush to do the finer branches. Plenty of water, plenty of paint, and then these little ones, a bit more paint, then coming off very well. A bit more water as well. That's like the main skeleton now. Needs a few uh, leaves on there, so I'm just going to clean the brush. Get as much of the water off as I can. And I'm going to scuff it up on the tea towel. Don't worry about damaging it, you ain't going to damage it. Just get the airs going all over the place, something like that. And then just Dip into your greeny colour, so lemon yellow, ultramarine, a bit of raw sienna as well, and then just pop your leaves in and then just keep varying it as you're going around. Just work your way around the palette on the greens. Remember, don't block it in too much, you want to be able to see through your tree to the other side. Bit more down there. On this side. That'll do, I think. Put some down the bottom, just actually, we've got uh, there's a, like a fence post thing down there, and then next to that, I'm just going to stick a bit of grass on it. So, wait, draw that a bit more. Get a sort of grass up there.
Right. We need some shadows. And if you've had a quick draw, We need some shadows just to bring the thing to life a bit. Now the sun is over on this side so the shadows will be coming from left to right. Which is handy because that's the sort of natural way I'd go with the brush. So let's make some shadow colour. So not too much water on the brush. Let's go light red, ultramarine. A nice warm shadowy colour. So it's like a sort of it's like a sort of purpley type thing. Now we've got the shadow from this big tree, and that's going right the way across. So that's going all the way across down there. Something like so. And then there's another sort of tree that you can't see, it's cutting straight across the road, the shadow up there, and then it's up the other side and across. And then there's a the distant one, even right the way up and across. Like a few little shadows on there. And a few little shadows going off these posts. Another shadow off there. And just some dips and dabs going on down there. Little man, it's, we want a little figure somewhere in the distance. So I'm switching back to the rigger. I could wet this, but I'm just going to use my arm just to hold it steadily. Wet it, I could dry that rather before I put my finger in it, and in it, but I'll, I'm going to do it like this. So, little dot for the head, and then like a little carrot. Little shadow of your man, and it's giving like a little walking stick thing, maybe in like a backpack or something. Just walking off into the distance. A couple of birds. Signature, I'm going to call that one finished. Uh, let's have a let's see how it compares to the photograph. Well, I finally managed to get a mount thanks to a suggestion by John. Um, this is what the finished painting looks like. So, let's uh, have a look at the photo, uh, the photograph. Obviously, the first the first thing that strikes me is the uh, the sort of lack of action in the sky. You can see I've tried to liven it up a bit. Start with a bit of raw sienna, then the blue, and then a bit of Payne's grey and the lizard and crimson for these the darker clouds. And then take the lighter ones off with a bit of tissue. Remember, I took the see the clouds. I deliberately took them off there so that you got the profile of the hill, so it stood out more clearly. On this side, we got our line of trees, and then the land comes down into the foreground with our fence posts along here. I could have done a bit more with the trees, I suppose they look a bit bland. But then I've tried to vary the green slightly, coming down into the foreground, and introduced the flat just to put the, uh, the fence posts in, and then the sort of muddy bits coming down to the edge of the road. Then we've got our road that sweeps round right into the right hand of the foreground. It was a, I think it was, was it Payne's Grey and Ultramarine, and just a few quick sweeps with the hike, leaving all these little unpainted bits, 
which actually contrasts quite well with the shadows if you look. It looks like sort of uh, light just sort of sparkling off the, off the road surface with the shadows going across. Big tree using the uh, side of the hake, just put it in very quickly and then using the rigger just to put in the finer branches. Then drying the hake and putting in the little leaves and stuff with a dry brush. We've actually got a buzz here coming towards us. A little figure with a with a walking stick walking off like a ram black who walking around the lakes looks uh, a bit more romantic I think. Put in last. Good mix of um ultramarine and light light red. We're putting our shadows, big one here at the bottom, going all the way across the road. A few little shadows off the fence posts. A few more. Sort of imagine big trees here upon the left, casting a shadow across the road here. Another one up there and a little one off our figure walking off into the distance. Little birds help add a bit of life to the scene. Well, there you go, that's uh, my quick impression of the road that runs alongside Alls Water in the Lake District. I hope you like that, thanks for watching. Keep practicing, any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon.